here's the next video in the recombinant dna technology series today we'll be discussing about the vectors for gene cloning and specifically i'll be talking about plasmids so as i told you the basic steps of gene cloning includes the generation of recombinant dna molecule in the first step a recombinant dna molecule is formed when the gene of interest the fragment containing the gene of interest is inserted into the vector what is a vector it's a circular dna molecule which facilitates the transfer of the gene to be cloned into the host cell so the vector is the transport uh, transport route you can say or um, uh, you know method through which we can transfer our gene into the host bacterium so that is the importance of vectors and we'll be discussing the very first vector that is the plasmids so before actually discussing about plasmids let us first have a look at the properties the basic properties a gene or sorry a dna that should possess to act like a vector so the first is the uh, it must be able to replicate within the host cell so when we are generating the recombinant dna molecule that is the vector plus our gene of interest and we are transferring it into the host cell our main aim is to amplify our dna or the gene of interest for any cloning purposes or for the production of any medicinal product etc the first and the most important thing is we want to amplify it in the number or we, we want it to multiply so the vector itself should be able to replicate and along with the vector our gene of interest will also be replicated the next property of the vector includes that for cloning purposes the vector should relatively of small size ideally it should be less than or approximately of 10 kb in size why it should be smaller in size because if we will take larger vector molecules then there are possibilities that it will be broken during the purification steps because larger molecules are very difficult to handle or manipulate so that is why a vector should be able to replicate within the host cell and it should be smaller in size so based on the properties discussed above there are two kinds of dna molecule that that can act as vectors the first one is plasmid and the next is bacteriophage so moving on to plasmids in this video let us let me tell you that plasmids are circular molecules of dna that lead an independent existence in the bacterial cell so these are circular first important thing these are circular dna molecule and the second thing is they are not connected to the bacterial chromosome that is they lie independent of the bacterial genetic material so these are circular molecules of dna and they have an independent existence in the bacterial cell next is the plasmid usually it will contain a few genes uh, as usual it's a dna molecule so it will have genes and what these genes will do they will confer the some characteristic properties to the host cell say a plasmid this plasmid contains a particular gene which will allow this plasmid will contain a particular gene which will allow the bacterial or the host bacterial cell to tolerate certain antibiotics that is it has the resistance against the antibiotic so the plasmid contains the gene which gives the bacteria this characteristic property of antibiotic resistance all right so that is the property of plasmid plasmids will also as i told you that these should be uh, like capable of replicating inside the bacterial cells so they should contain a ori or origin of replication right 
Next is let us uh, look, have a look at how the antibiotic resistance is used as selectable marker. Suppose in cloning experiment we have a culture in which a few bacterial cells do not possess plasmid and others possess plasmid, right? So ideally what should happen the bacterial cells containing the plasmid should be able to grow in the medium containing antibiotic and the cells without plasmid will die in the medium which contains the antibiotics and will survive in the medium which do not contain antibiotics. So E. coli cells which contain RP4 plasmids having ampicillin and or tetracycline canamycin all three resistance genes. So if we grow the mixed culture in the normal growth medium with no antibiotic all of these cells will grow properly and if we introduce tetracycline in the growth medium the cells which will survive have to have the plasmid containing the tetracycline resistance gene and those cells bacterial cells which do not possess this rp4 plasmid will die right because they will not have a tetracycline resistance gene so this is how these antibiotic resistance genes are used as selectable marker that is we are able to select the population of cells containing the plasmid so it helps us as a marker gene right rp4 carries genes for resistance to ampicillin tetracycline and canamycin only those e coli cells that contain rp4 or a related plasmid are able to survive and grow in a medium that contains toxic amount of one or more of these antibiotics. So let us have a look at the integrative plasmids or episomes now. What are integrative plasmids? Say plasmids as I told you they should be able to replicate inside the host cell. So if they are existing in the bacterial cell independent of the its chromosome and replicating in number on its own it is known as non-integrative plasmids but a few plasmids known as episomes what are their properties they will integrate or get inserted into the chromosome of the bacteria like this and for a few or maybe many uh, cell division cycles they will be replicated along with the chromosome of the bacteria right so this is the <clears throat> integrative plasmids and how they are got get replicated so integrative plasmids they replicate by inserting themselves into bacterial chromosome what happens as these got integrated into the chromosome this does not mean that they will remain as it is because even if they like men get maintained in this form for very uh, like numerous cell cycles but still at some stage they will get excluded from this chromosome and will exist as independent plasmid molecules so these are the two types non-integrative and integrative plasmids based on their replicative properties let us now have a look at the plasmid size and copy number uh, as I told you earlier, for cloning, gene cloning purposes, we need a smaller size of plasmid molecule, right? Because larger molecules, larger plasmids will be difficult to handle and manipulate. What is copy number? Copy number actually tells us how many copies of a particular plasmid are present in a bacterial cell or are normally found in a single bacterial cell. Cell, right so that gives you the copy number of a plasmid based on this there are two types of plasmid stringent and relaxed plasmid normally what happens if a plasmid is larger in size it will exist in low copy number that is in a particular host cell if a plasmid is larger in size it will exist in uh, like maybe one copy of it will be formed or maximum two or three copies of it are found. So those are known as stringent plasmids. And mostly the smaller plasmids are 
found in higher numbers, maybe 20, 10 or 15, 30 plasmids maximum are found in the bacterial host cells. So these are known as relaxed plasmids because they are found in higher copy number. Right? So these are a few examples of plasmids and their size, origin, organisms. Right? Let's uh, have a look at the another property of plasmids, conjugation and compatibility. What is conjugation? The lateral gene transfer of genetic material from one bacterial cell to into another is conjugation. That is actually a sexual transfer of genetic material between the bacterial cells. So, what is a conjugated plasmid? It is a plasmid, it is a set of plasmid which will contain a set of genes known as tra genes. What do these genes are responsible for? These genes facilitate the transfer of genetic material between bacterial cells. So, a conjugated plasmid have the tra genes and is capable of conjugation whereas a non-conjugated plasmid lacks tra genes and therefore they they themselves don't uh, like are not capable of conjugation but they can be transferred along with the conjugated plasmid if they both of them are present in single bacterial cell so non conjugated plasmid can also be transferred to the bacterial cell along with the conjugated plasmid there is a possibility to this situation. What is compatibility? See, if there are two types of plasmid and they can exist in the bacterial cell at the same time, so th those are known as compatible plasmid. So, several different types of plasmid may be present in one host cell at the same time. And if they can be present, they are known as compatible Plasmids. If two plasmids can coexist in the host cell, they are said to be compatible. Based on their compatibility and their existence, the plasmids are uh, placed into various incompatibility groups. So, let us now quickly uh, see about the plasmid classification. The first kind of plasmid is fertility plasmid of, or F plasmid. These are basically just responsible for conferring the property of conjugation. Example is F plasmid of E. coli, right? So they uh, give the conjugative property to the bacterial cells, right? The second is resistance or R plasmids. What a, a like example is RP4, as I discussed in earlier example from Pseudomonas. These type of plasmids, they will carry the gene which confer the property of antibiotic resistance to the host cell. That is, if a bacterial cell contains a resistant plasmid, then it will, con uh, in, it will allow the bacterial cell to grow even under toxic conditions where the antibiotic is present in the growth medium. So, they will give the antibiotic resistance to the host cell, right? Third one is call plasmids. Example is call E1 of E. coli. What are these plasmids? These are responsible or they have the gene producing the colicins with, uh, which will kill the other bacteria, right? The other uh, next one is degradative plasmids. What are degradative? These confer the properties to the host cell of degrading unusual compounds. Like these are the, uh, these uh, like bacteria having these plasmids will be able to degrade the compounds which are otherwise non-degradable by the plasmids. So example, toluene, solid salicylic acid. So example of the degradative bacteria is tol from Pseudomonas cutidia. The next plasmid is virulence plasmid. Virulence plasmid, they will confer the virulence to the host cell. That is, if these types of plasmid are present in the bacteria, then the bacteria is able to cause a 
<coughs> disease in the host organism. So the TI plasmid of agrobacterium tumefacens, which uh, will induce crown gall disease on dicotyledonous plants, right? So that's uh, like that's all for the plasmids and the introduction about the plasmids as vectors. In the next section, I will discuss about bacteriophages for you guys. Right? If you don't understand something, if you don't, uh, you know, um, if you are stuck at somewhere, just leave me a comment. I'll clarify it. And do let me know if you uh, want to add something. And uh, just press like and subscribe to my channel before leaving, please. Thank you. Bye-bye.